All right. Hello. Welcome to Double Play Sports. I'm James alongside Pat. Today we're here with former MLB outfielder Darnell McDonald. Darnell, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Great, great. Thanks for coming on. This is going to be uh, really great. It's good to have you. First question I have for you is, uh, well, baseball definitely runs in your family. Uh, your brother Donzel saw time in the bigs with the Yankees and your cousin James was a starter for the Dodgers. How competitive were you guys as kids growing up playing baseball? Yeah, yeah, it does run in my family. So, you know, I, I had a, a younger brother also that played uh, with the Phillies too. Um, but very competitive. Uh, one of the advantages that I had was my brother, he was four years older than uh, I was, my older brother. And so um, growing up, I always played on his teams. And so I was playing against guys that were older than me, they were beating up on me uh, at the time. But that is, uh, you know, that's how you get better. So that was uh, uh, really cool to be able to do that, to play with him. Also got an opportunity to play. Uh, we played together in the fall league in Arizona as professionals. And um, so the competitive juices always uh, and still run in, in the family. Yeah, so uh, you grew up near Denver uh, and eventually you become one of the best athletes in state history as a high school athlete. You were first team All-American in your junior and senior year of high school and Baseball America's high school player of the year, your senior year and you uh, got offers to play running back at Texas. So as a younger athlete, with all this attention on you, who were some of your role models? You know, my dad, uh, Donzel, uh, my older brother, uh, Donzel, my high school baseball coach, Mark Johnson, and, uh, you, know, um, you know, when I was in high school, high school, the time you're talking about, I had an opportunity to meet Ellis Burks, and, uh, you know, he was a mentor of mine uh, when he was in Colorado playing for the Rockies and uh, also as a, you know, when I was a professional. So what was the pressure like for you at such a young age when you were considered one of the best, if not the best player um, at, at your sport in the country? Mm, yeah, great question. No, not really. There wasn't any pressure. Um, you know, I always looked at it as a, uh, just win, 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 win to, um, you know, have opportunity to play uh, sports, played as many sports as possible at the time. Usually whatever season it was, that's what sport uh, we were playing. And, uh, you know, like James mentioned earlier, to have the opportunity to get a scholarship and play uh, football as well as baseball. So either way, I looked, always looked at it as a, as a win, win. It was uh you know, sports were always an avenue for me to, um, you know, just a different way to to express myself. Like, you know, the sports was that was like my sanctuary. So, um, never, never really uh, any pressure. Yeah. So you were drafted number twenty six overall in the nineteen ninety seven MLB draft by the Orioles. Having to move cross country at age 18 to play pro ball is a big shift and can't be easy. But who is a coach or a mentor who really helped you during that time and in that transition? Yeah, so, you know, it's, uh, it, it was a big jump. And, it, you know, it is a big jump. And especially, and you get handed a lot of money. You're, uh, you know, thrown into the real world. And, you know, the way I learned is from a, from a lot of failure a lot of failure. I think uh, my first year, first first or second year of pro balls, when they first, like, I got a cell phone, you know, so I was able to, uh, you know, reach out to my family on, on those long bus rides. You know, as a high schooler, I didn't, I didn't really understand uh, that di the dynamic of professional sports or actually like minor league baseball, you know, understanding that going to be taking 18 hour bus rides across the country to go to go play games. I think a lot of people think you, you sign a pro contract and you uh, automatically you're in the you're in the show, you're in the MLB. Um, you know, if you, you know, you look at my career, I spent a lot of time in the minor leagues, spent a lot of time on, on, on bus rides. So, um, you know, it was a time, a lot of camaraderie. Um, with my teammates 
um, you know, some a lot of those a lot of those guys that uh, I played with, I still talk to to this day. So, you know, my peers also uh, helped me through those times. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, later on, after cracking the majors with the Orioles, you never really quite found a big time role there, and then you bounced around. But then once you landed in Cincinnati, you cracked the opening day roster. After all the hard work you had put in, how did it feel to kind of have a semi-consistent or consistent MLB role? Wow, yeah, it was uh, – that was one of the uh, most memorable and uh, transformational times in my life, making that opening day roster in 2009, Cincinnati Reds, Dusty Baker. Um, it kind of uh, – catapulted, catapulted my career, you know, at that time, like you said, I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, in different places, minor league contracts. And so to be able to, to make my first opening day roster, the dream come true. And uh, it also, it gave me a lot of confidence, right? It gave me a lot of confidence, confidence to, uh, to, to press on and, and persevere. Um, so you hit your first uh, home run on August 30th, 2009, after some uh, pretty solid Dodgers pitcher by the name of Clayton Kershaw. Uh, that's <laughs> multi-time All-Star and MVP Clayton Kershaw. Uh, how did it feel to watch that first one fly out of the park? Oh, man. Yeah, right. Clayton Kershaw, Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um, another, like, again, like, memorable moment. We'll never forget uh, – that fastball he threw me, that he threw it right into my barrel. And uh, to be able to say that my first home run was off of, you know, a caliber pitcher of Clayton Kershaw doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. So after hitting pretty well throughout your career, you joined the Red Sox. And on April 20th, you became only the ninth Red Sox ever to homer in your first at-bat with the team. Being part of one of the greatest franchises ever that ever is a big honor what was the coolest moment you had throughout your career well that was one of them my first day in uh as a red sock to be able to hit a, a homer and a walk off in the same game um definitely don't uh you know i don't i, I don't even think I, I i dreamed of doing something like that um you know it hit that first home run off of uh clayton kershaw yeah, my first hit off of Cliff Lee, but um, I would say my, you know, my most memorable uh, moment came in uh, San Francisco. It was in 2010. Um, I met a, a, a young kid by the name of uh, Sam. Uh, Sam. Sam had uh, cancer, and so I met him before the game. He gives me a, a blue brisk wrist to wear, you know, uh, the, you know, the wristbands people wear, and uh, for Sam's team. So when he gave me that wristband, I was part of Sam's team. And then, uh, you know, I proceeded to hit a home run, my first at bat off of uh, Madison Bumgarner. Uh, and so I remember just running around the bases and I really couldn't believe it. And so the, uh, the friend of mine that introduced me to Sam said, you know, if you wear this bracelet, you're going to win, a, you're going to hit a home run. You know, people say these things and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go up there and hit that home run. And I just remember running around the bases. It was like uh, everything was moving in slow motion and uh, was really, really proud. And I know Sam was a, he was a, a, a big Red Sox fan. So I know he was pumped up. And, uh, you know, to this, to this day, uh, I think that remains, you know, my most memorable moment. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so amazing. So playing with some of baseball's greatest during your time with the Red Sox, like David Ortiz and guys like Dustin Pedroia, who was the player that had the biggest impact on your career? Oh, man, so many, so many, so many. Um, huh. I'll, I'll put it this way. The best part of my career is or was – being able to play with so many great players. Like when I say great players, Hall of Fame players and players that uh, you just learn so much by just watching them. And I, you know, I learned how to be a big leaguer by watching these big leaguers 
and, and watching, you know, their routines and how they went about their business um, on and off the field. Um, you know, I want to see, and, and another big moment that I want to, I, I want to touch on is in uh, 05, 05, 06, right after I got released, uh, I was with the Indians. I got released. I was in Buffalo, New York, and I went to uh, Durham. In Durham, I have a lot of love for uh, Durham, the Durham Bulls. I have a lot of love for them in uh, North Carolina. They, that was another place that rejuvenated my career. And I learned a lot there. I remember we used to go to, uh, we used to do these hospital visits, right? You sign up, you go to the hospital, meet kids before the game. And that was really a, another turning point for me. It just, uh, it, it uplifted me. I, I know that they did more for me than I did for them. And, you know, since then, I always wanted to do stuff in the community and, and, and be around, um, you know, different people and be able to bring some light and joy to, uh, to people off the field. Yeah. Uh, so after the 2010 season where you batted 270 with the Red Sox, you got to play uh, for some other great teams like the Yankees and the Cubs. Uh, what was your favorite ballpark to play in during your career? Favorite park would be uh, Coors Field. I'm from Denver, I'm biased to Coors Field. Yeah. Um, obviously, the you know Fenway Park is 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 up there. Wrigley Field is up there. Kind of the same, same, same kind of uh, uh, setup. You know, you have these these stadiums in the middle of a city. You're just walking around. Next thing you know. Hey, there's Fenway Park there, there's Wrigley Field, and these things are um, historic, a lot of history. They're, they're museums. And so to be able to put a uniform on and play in these stadiums uh, with electric fans, unbelievable fans in both places. Um, so definitely Fenway, Wrigley, and uh, Coors Field, just because of the uh, aesthetic of Coors Field, so green. So arguably the strongest part of your game was your top tier defense. Was there ever a player that you tried to model in their style of defense? Style of defense. I now nah. growing up I watched Ken Griffey, the kid. I wanted to be like Griffey. Uh, I actually played shortstop, so I wanted to be like Barry Larkin. I wanted to play short like Larkin, Sean Dunstan. Uh, at the time growing up in Colorado, we didn't have a, a team until I think '94. So I watched a lot of Cubs games. And, uh, you know, again, I wanted to play short like Sean Dunstan and uh, Ryan Sandberg. But uh, I think my number one, I mean, I say defense. That's, that's funny that you say that, man. You know, Andrew Jones was another, another guy. I wanted to play center field like Andrew Jones. Andrew Jones, Kirby Puckett was another guy that I wanted to uh, emulate. Yeah. So throughout your career, for you, who was just the toughest pitcher that you had to face? You just couldn't figure him out. He seemed to get you every time. That would definitely be uh, Jamie Moyer. I don't know how many at-bats I have off of Jamie Moyer, but I'm pretty sure I don't have any hits. And it's, uh, it's crazy because Jamie Moyer, I mean, I think he topped out at 85, 86. Uh, really crafty pitcher. Um, but yeah, I never, I never could get a hold of, of him. Frustrating, frustrating at bat for me. Yeah, no, Jamie Moyer was a really great pitcher and he's the guy that was pitching well into his late forties and almost into his fifties. So he's a incredible talent. Um, so after retiring from baseball in 2014, uh, you worked as a coach in the Cubs organization. What was the biggest shift from playing to coaching? Hmm. Um, Biggest shift from playing to coaching is, uh, I think number one is the time. Like you spend a, a lot of time at the field as a player and, you know, being able to work on the other side. I have a lot of respect for all coaches everywhere because a lot goes into the coaching at any level, especially at the, the major league level. A lot of preparation goes into uh, each day 
And, uh, you know, so, so that was a big adjustment. And then um, just relationships, you know, you, you're building a different type of relationship, right? So, you know, a lot of the guys that I uh, was coaching at some time, like I played with those guys, right? Similar like David Ross right now. And so it's a, it's a different dynamic. Okay, now I'm the coach and player. But at the same time, like any, it's all uh, like relationships, right? And you build trust with guys and um, connections. And, um, you know, then, at, then after that, it's kind of like, all, it's, it's all the same. We're all in this together. We're all, um, um, you know, shooting for the same, the, same, the same goal. And I really enjoy, especially working with like the younger guys minor league guys, right? I can really relate to these minor league guys grinding in the minors, um, you know, the mindset that it takes to, to go through the minors and get out of the minors. I don't think anyone is, uh, would say, yeah, I, I want to be here, right? Every, every guy wants to be in the big leagues. So, uh, you know, being able to connect with the, the younger players and uh, that are, are, are really open, right? Because, uh, you know, baseball players can... Are, are known to be really superstitious. And especially if you have, you know, 10 years, you've been playing 10 years, you're, you're not really going to be quick to, to change the things that you've been doing as opposed to when you're just signing and, um, you know, you're wide-eyed, ready to go, and, you know, what information you have for me. So, um, you know, just being able to relate to, to guys, I feel like I could relate to every player because I was pretty much in every situation from being – a top prospect to being uh, a suspect to being to being you know released to all those things so um you know the 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 best thing for me is that it was it allowed me to empathize with a lot of people and understand uh the things that they're going through so recently you started the let him play podcast featuring some other former big leaguers mike cameron and bill hall what is your podcast all about and what has that experience been like for you guys so far? It's been really good. I mean, I think probably similar to you guys, like we have, we go through this pandemic and it's like, man, what are we going to do? Like, you know, in the pivot to the podcast, right? The podcast has allowed us to connect. Um, Cause before that, I don't, you know, I hadn't talked to uh, Mike Cameron, and Bill Hall in a long time. So be able to connect with them. And then we, we, um, you know what, let's, let's, let's do a podcast. And so we started the podcast and it's been, it's been really, really, um, uh, you know, just fulfilling, like connecting with guys, ex teammates, and even, you know, being able to connect with Dusty Baker, the guy that, that, uh, was my manager you know, when I made, the, you know, first opening day roster and Jerry Manuel, these guys are, uh, like uh, baseball Bibles, man, they've done so much. They have a lot of knowledge and for them to be willing to share that knowledge and share those stories, right? I think um, that the, the number one thing is these stories, you know, being able to hear these stories and reminisce a little bit, brought a lot of joy um, to me, you know, things that kind of, I think at the time when you're in it, you take for granted, right? And then you get them playing I think you're able to appreciate those things more, appreciate those stories. So it's been really cool to be able to, to uh, reminisce with those guys. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great podcast. I've listened to a few episodes so far and the one with Kevin Euclid was really great. Oh man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Right. You is, you is, you is awesome, man. One of yeah. my favorite teammates. Thank you so much for doing this, Darnell. This has been a great interview. It was really great to meet you and thank you for everyone for watching. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Keep up the good work. Good luck uh, uh, along the way. I'll, I'll yeah. be checking you guys out, man. So, so keep going. Thank yeah. you for having me on.